Right now, the last day for Newton Public School students will be June 18th. Do you think they'll go back to school May 4th? Um, I don't think they will. Governor Charlie Baker says closing schools around the state is now necessary. The rigorous online learning started right away. Google Meets, Google Classroom became routine as soon as school buildings closed. There just isn't enough guidance or enough information out there about how to do it safely. We made a decision to close for two weeks. Uh, we took the Thursday, Friday to have our faculty practice and to think about their lesson plans, uh, move into planning and training on Zoom, uh, looking at how we could support them from a professional development perspective, as well as the students. And then on Friday, the mayor announced, uh, after we announced we were closing for two weeks, that we would be closed through April. So we were, uh, on Monday, we were immediately into remote learning. We had steps where if the school was closed for one day, for two days, for three days, for four days, we had different steps uh, that we were planning to take. Now when we got to that fourth day, and that extended closure plan that we created, that's really where remote learning was going to take effect. Uh, but we were able to provide them um, small group, 15, about 15 students per group training over the course of that, that Friday the 13th of March, and um, students left the building with Zoom, downloaded a Zoom account, and they had already run Zoom and um, practiced a Zoom classroom. We had a COVID-19 site where we housed all of our schedules and all of the supports for parents and students. From day one, they, they were all there. They all, they all logged into Zoom. They all went to Google Classroom for instructions and we had just an incredible start to kick this thing off. Right now we have over 90% attendance every day. With two weeks left in the school year, we're probably gonna be through about 60, 70% um, of the curriculum maps for quarter four. And for those students who did not have resources like internet or other, we made provisions and accommodations to help. And we uh, were able to meet with those families, meet with those, those faculty members and provide the technology that, uh, that they needed. You know, we have four or five tutors that have been working with students on Zoom. All of our faculty have provided office hours for our students in the morning. So if a student had questions um, in the morning before that first eight o'clock class, we have a 15 minute period where you could log in to office hours, you could, you could check in with your teacher. And then at the end of the day, there's a whole hour from one to two where students can go into any Zoom uh, room, remote room, and meet with any teacher and get extra help from that teacher. We've tried to incorporate some some fun elements into the classes. You know, like I know one of the math teachers here, uh, Paula Daly. Like she told her kids, like everybody wear sunglasses to class, like tomorrow. You know, we we have we have t we have teachers that are getting really creative to try to keep kids engaged. Coaches have continued with their athletes. Uh, you know, any club that was in existence is happening. We've had a virtual 5K. Uh, we've done a lot of things for our community and with our community and with our students to make sure that the student experience is robust. We have a Jesuit community here at BCI, and the Jesuit community immediately moved into taking on a live stream mass every Sunday. So we pray together. On Easter, we had 4,000 uh, views of the mass. We had teams that were playing to play sports in the spring that met on Zoom, uh, that had virtual practices. Uh, we even had a spring break where we ran uh, cooking classes, yoga, CrossFit, and we had activities um, for students and families and faculty to join in on during our April breaks. Uh, one of our alums, I spoke with him the other day and he said uh, he has three boys here, one's a senior, and he said uh, kudos to you uh, and BC High. He said, I, I, I'm in class every day with the boys. I love it. I'm learning so much and you guys have done a great job. I've been getting emails um, probably every week from another parent with a compliment about how engaging a class is with a history teacher. We're scenario planning just like everyone else and we're looking at the high schools but we're also looking at the colleges and universities to see what they're doing. I think that investing in professional development with your faculty uh, making sure your students have the resources that they need to succeed, uh, making sure that you're all in lockstep in terms of your alignment on what a program could look like. If we had to go back to a remote learning plan or if we had to 
go to some kind of a revised schedule in the future. I think uh, we already have a team of people that are working on what that might look like and we've started that process really early. These two schools show what is possible when leaders are determined not to let crises like COVID-19 stop them. I'm a Catholic school mom and I know kids want to learn, be engaged and be challenged. They deserve to learn during this pandemic as public officials and school leaders across the state plan for reopening this fall. They should follow the lessons from these two exceptional Catholic schools and ensure that all students have consistent, structured, rigorous, and supportive instruction that we know our students can handle. We at Pioneer Institute want to work with policymakers to help equip parents, teachers, and students with the technology, devices, and resources they need to meet their potential every single day, whether at home, in a classroom, or under a hybrid approach. We know they can do it. Let's be there for them.